So, hello guys, my name is Max, and welcome to a new video on my YouTube channel. Yeah, you can believe your eyes. I just want to start by thanking and welcoming all new subscribers I got over the summer and all ones as well for sticking around with me for quite some time now. So I'm really glad for your support and kind comments and good suggestions on how to make these videos better. So some of you might be wondering why I haven't uploaded any videos for about two months now. So I just want to explain that before we start programming. So over the summer did I go back to my parents house to work and stuff. And that's about uh, 500 kilometers from where I live normally. So I basically couldn't bring my computer. Which has the consequence that I almost haven't programming at all for a couple of months. Except for some crappy web design for my personal site. That's actually starting to take some shape here. Uh, so I was debating if I should continue the tic-tac-toe game or start something new and fresh now when I'm back at my apartment and as you can see on the title in this video, did I go with uh, later. Um, so in this video today, we can call it the start of the second season of game development here on, my, on the channel or we're going to program a simple Tetris clone using JavaScript and HTML. So by simple, am I referring to some limitations for the game like we won't have any menu screens and no effects. But these should be easy enough to add for yourself if you so wish. But enough of me babbling about, let's actually start programming here. So we can start by creating a new folder on our computer here, and I will call it Tetris. Um, and just open that up with, uh, oh, this is the source code for my pay <laughs> homepage at the moment. So as you can see, I use Docpad for the back end of the site. But anyway, enough of that. So let's just open up this folder we created um, with blank text and I just got the text here. So one second guys, be right back. Yeah, so I'm back guys, so blah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, we created this folder here called Tetris. Anyway, so instead of here, we'll create uh, some more folders. So we'll have a CSS folder for all of our CSS. It'll probably just be one file, but whatever. And then we'll have a JS and a source folder or CRC where we will have all of our JavaScript code and lastly, our REST folder or resources. We will have all of our image data and uh, sound if you so wish to add that as well. Anyway, speaking of the resource folder, uh, for this project, we'll use uh, not a project as a base. Um, so we'll use the graphics from, from this project in particular uh, to facilitate our <laughs> creation uh, game creation here. Anyway, so I'll leave a link in the description for this uh, Google code page. But then we'll probably directly want to go to the GitHub page and it's have bin and asset folder, just the files we are interested in. So for this, we will use all of the PNG images. So just open up every file that ends with .png and then just use any method uh, you want to copy them over to the resource folder of your project here. I'll just uh, drag them <laughs> into the folder since that's quite simple and quick. Yeah, so these should now be added to the project, which is good. Um, so we will need some more files from the internet uh, for this project. So we use the JavaScript inheritance system from John Resig that we used in the Astro games and uh, all stuff like that um, to yeah also facilitate our game creation uh, to make it easier for us to make games and uh, classes and other stuff like that. So just go to the section, second section and copy uh, the source for the for the yeah for the thing he had been developed. Anyway, so just go to the JS folder, create a new file, and I'll call it class.js, and so I just copy that. So we have that done. And we'll also use a module loader for this particular project. So just go to requirejs.org. I choose require JS today because that's really simple to use, um, and it only requires you to like download uh, the latest version, uh, and you're good to go. So just uh, copy that, uh, go click the minified uh, download. Sorry, I can show you again. Download here, then the minified button there, and just copy the content of the file, and create a new file here. That we call require.js and it's out there you just copy the thing you just or paste the thing you just copied anyway so we're good to go here so we can start by uh, creating our game now actually so we, we will just create our index file and our css styles.css uh, file that 
but we can close that down for now. So we just create uh, our uh, yeah, uh, HTML code here. So we call set the title. STC maybe a simple Tetris club like that, and then in the body we'll add all of our script dependencies today. So we'll first of all uh, import the class TS file. Then we'll have our uh, require JS file here. So uh, JS sorry require add uh, JS. Then as attribute here or a data attribute to the to the thing, we declare this data main uh, attribute, and this is sort of the file we first want to the program to kick off here, and that will actually be in the source directory as well. So let's create that file called main.js, and inside of here is log out um, message for now, so console.log test, just to see if our setup is correct so far. So let's open this up in a browser. Uh, there it is, <laughs> and look, inspect on the page, open the console, yeah, this test message is written out, so that means that it at least works so far. Yeah, so, uh, let's include another file before we, we include a require JS file though, that we will call engine.js, not just basic namespace. Uh, for, for our game here, that we will use uh, in order to facilitate game creations in the future and this game as well. Uh, and this engine that we soon will create will use this canvas tag here as a starting point for the game. So you have to include this canvas tag as well as this uh, script in order for uh, our games uh, both now and in the future to work here. Anyway, so let's create this file. So. I uh, just call it engine.js <laughs> and engine is maybe a strong word here because everything it will uh, take care of is, is uh, uh, abstract out some usage on the canvas uh, take care of input for us and content loading so just create these global variables here or they will be included globally to the page then create this closed uh, function scope where we'll, we'll initialize all of these uh, objects. So we can start by the canvas. Uh, we can actually uh, make that also equals to a closed function scope here. So we just say var c, set that to an empty object like that for now. That later will return here. Then we can add properties and methods to that object uh, to like make them globally available for us. Anyway, so we will declare our frame. Um, uh, we will use like two canvases in order for it to work, so, like scale content with uh, pixel perfect resolution. Uh, so the frame will be equal to the document dot get elements by tag name canvas zero. What this does, it gets all of the canvas elements on the page, and then it uh, this uh, part here will return the first it finds. So the first canvas tag on the page will be equal to the frame of our canvas here. Then we'll have uh, the frame context, that will just be frame.get context 2D, like that. And we have our view object, and that will just be document.create element canvas, like so. And that will also need a context, so it's a view.get context 2D. Then do we need some other private variables here? Do we have the frame width? Uh, frame height, uh, view width, view height, and then our scale factor that will set to 1 at the start here. Anyway, so now when we have done all that, we can add some uh, some properties to the C object here. So we add a frame, uh, the view, and the context to the, uh, to be globally available here, like that. And then we have this flip function or method. On this, uh, that we also want to create here, and what it does, it will basically clear the frame. So you say frame context dot clear image. And we want to clear the whole image, so zero zero. This is the starting coordinates, and then the width and the height of the rectangle we want to clear. So that will be equal to the frame width and the frame height. And then basically what what we want to do is we take this dot context. So we can use this 
the point was the C object, which has the property name context, and that's of course equals to this object up here. So you can say, uh, oh, sorry, uh, before we do that, though, we want to draw uh, uh, an image to the frame context that we go to the view. So you say you say this view, which of course is this object, which is this object. And we want that to fill the complete canvas, so you say frame width and frame height again. Here, then we also want to clear, uh, it should be clear rect, not clear image. <laughs> Sorry for that. Uh, we also want to clear the rect here as well, so we say 0, 0, uh, view width, and view height. So, what this does is it will um, scale up. Uh, the view of our canvas uh, and draw that to to the frame uh, to the frame context. Yeah, this will declare a moment here. Anyway, um, we'll also declare uh, or define some properties on the C object here. So we have a width object, uh, then a scale, and of course a height as well. So these properties will have a getter and setter. Uh, so you can do those in JavaScript using this object.defineProperty method. So the first uh, augment is the object you want uh, to define the property to. The second one is the name. And then the, the third augment is a object with a get um, property and a set property that's equal to two functions that will be called uh, when we are getting and setting uh, data to this object. So we can just copy those in here as well. Um, like that. So let's just see here. And then we can say this dot, uh, sorry, c dot scale equals to the scale. Just so we uh, populate those uh, things. Um, uh, yeah, when we start the game here. So we can start with the width here actually. So here we say uh, this dot view dot width equals to, uh, to the w here. And then we just say this dot scale equals to the scale here again to correct this, these uh, variables and all the stuff like that. And then when we want to set, <laughs> I got those the wrong direction here, of course, set get set and get I really don't know what I'm doing right now but anyway yeah here we go hope that was clear anyway view dot height equals to the age here this dot scale equals to the scale and here we just want to return uh, view width view height sorry and here we want to return view uh, width like that and the scale is a bit, little bit more complicated, but we also want to set the scale object equal to s here. The, uh, the view width equal to this dot view width. The view height equals to this dot view dot height. Uh, the view uh, frame width should be equal to this dot frame the width should be equal to the view width times s, and then the frame height is the frame the height equals the view uh, height times s like that and then one final thing that's really important if you want pixel perfect scaling is to set the uh, image smoothing um, smoothing enable to false here on the on the frame context just for it to work in uh, more browsers, we'll create this uh, sort of polyfill to enable uh, to disable this on uh, with some prefixes there. So yes, we can create this array here with uh, some prefixes, and then we can say for each, which take a function as an augment, and then we just say framing context uh, D here. We'll have the values of uh, o, M, S, Moss, and WebKit, so that we can just concatenate the, uh, uh, that string with the image smoothing enabled 
you said that false right there. And don't forget to change it to a capitalized i there. Anyway, and then you get we just want to return the scale factor. So if this works now, we can check in the against uh, reload page. We don't get any errors. That's good at least. So you can see here. Mm, let's add some styling to the canvas the page here, so you can add a border for now at least. And I reload. Oh, so and then we just want to link that to the page, of course. We say a link um, CSS styles CSS. See, yeah. So we can now see we have the canvas on page. So let's see if we can change the, uh, the width and height and stuff. So let's set the width to 100 pixels. See what that looks like. Yeah, that seems to be working. Then let's set the scale to like 4 or 2 maybe. Then that should be twice as big. Yeah, and that seems to be the case there. So that's cool. The cool thing is if, let's say, we draw an image, we say fill rect uh, 0, 0, or even better, let's draw a uh, an arc metria, so we say begin part c dot uh, fill maybe c dot arc we say 10 10 5 um, and then between which angles of course so you can say to uh, you can say 7 that should be it so let's see oh then we of course want to say call the flip method on the canvas in order for it to show here. Yeah, so that seems to be working here. There we could already see that it worked, but let's just prove my point here. So we say canvas high and let's set that equal to 20 maybe. So here you can see when we increase the scaling factor that the graphic still is sharp here. Uh, which is good if you want to like make pixelated games like retro classic games and all stuff like that. And if we wouldn't have made it uh, with the image smoothing enable, we can disable that feature and then you can see what it will look like. You can see here that it will be this uh, all uh, like uh, smooth, smooth and out and don't really look good. So that's why we use this. Uh, we declare the canvas the way we have done. Uh, up until this point here. Anyway, let's get rid of all this and let's get the require JS uh, up and running. So we can start by require uh, JS. We can start by declaring some configurations. So we can say the base URL. We can set that equal to the JS folder, and this part here, of course, relative to the index page. We also declare some parts. So we can uh, declare a shorten here for the source folder, which is of course in the just like this. So we don't need we then we can just type when we want to include modules. We can just uh, de declare like like this. Uh, we can say like source uh, canvas dot uh, yeah canvas instead of like doing that. So that's just uh, a bit of convenience here. Anyway. So uh, we start off the game by requiring, uh, requiring uh, the source uh, game file like that. So we say function game. This is the way module loading works in uh, uh, yeah in the required JS. So that will look in the source folder and find a file that say, says game.js or and so on. Then that will put us into this object here, whatever that uh, uh, path uh, returns. So then we can say, for example, we can say var app equals game dot extend the, the syntax from the simple JavaScript inheritance system. And here we can say like init function. Here we can set a whoops. We can set the size of the canvas and all stuff like that. Mm, yeah, just to see if it works here. So then we can specify a window on load event. Yeah, let's do that. 
and here we just want to create a var game equals new app and then game or run maybe. So for it works we'll need to create this game file that we haven't declared yet so define a new module so you say define uh, function like that and here and here we just want to return game which we declare up here so we say var game equals class extend and it's just to make sure it works here so let's create the run method and there we just log out running for now so let's see if it works so let's reload the page uh, the object on load didn't really seem to uh, work here so let's see let's actually remove that Let's do it like this instead. Yeah, so now we can see that that works at least. <laughs> so that's cool. So we now have the basic game up and running here. So let's continue here with the engine now. Uh, so let's actually move the input after the content here just to like, give a visual uh, way of how we create this game. So we leave the input for the next video, I guess but we can create content loading now. Yeah, so let's create this content variable here equals to this its own function scope here. If I can hit escape, that would be great. Yeah, so we can say var c again, why not? And this c of course is uh, uh, really different from the one we have above here. So what the context will need, it will need a array of files that will create like this and I will have a uh, has load variable, a counter and load uh, count equal to zero like that. Then everything this function need at least for this game we can extend this engine later when we'll need more function I guess is just to have this uh, load function that will take a name and a source uh, where we say that the source is equal to the source or the name so we can uh, give uh, if let's say we just give this function one argument we give it the source for the file we want to load uh, then the name and the source will be the same thing here basically then we just take this switch statement on the name uh, sorry the source dot split on the dot dot pop so that will give the file end, uh, ending the file prefix so then we have all the cases here so we say about png so to like load images and uh, we can say that we want to load gifs as well let's say we want to load uh, jpegs for some reason and let's just break that and then let's say that we want to load orgs uh, mp3s and uh, waves uh, like that and then for let's say in the future that we want to load JSON and uh, TMX uh, for like file maps and uh, for maps and stuff like that but anyway the thing we are interested in today is uh, the images so that's the one we will do in uh, for the Tetris game then we can extend this in the future anyway so you can save our image equal new image like that and then let's just say that image on load event will be equal to a function which on calling will uh, uh, increment the load count like that and don't forget uh, also can say it like this let's see how would how do we want this to do this we can say file count plus plus like that so let's change this file count um, yeah this is good yeah so each time we call this method we increment the file count and each time we load a resource we increment the load count so that's good and then we just set the source of the image to the source argument and then we just set the files um, with, uh, with, the, with the name here equals to the image object like that then to just like get resources you can say c.get 
set that equal to function that take a name as augment and then we just return the files at the name like that uh, and then let's also have a progress function that we just re uh, return how many files we have loaded and divide that by the number of files we have added to the project so let's say uh, when this file this progress function uh, returns one we know that all of the files are loaded on the page all right so that was it for the content loader so let's see if it works so we can just go to the app here as well again and then we can just say uh, yeah we can say content load we want to load a back image that's in the resource folder and we just call back.png so let's just yank that down there and then we have the numbers file and the blocks file like that so you can call this uh, blocks and you can call this numbers so let's see if it works now so let's open up the browser again yeah that seems to be working I have no error messages at least so that's cool so basically what we want to now do now when we have loaded all of these things is we want to uh, create this tick function which we will extend there from the game class later but for now let's just fill this out so we can say if a content dot progress equals to one then we just want to draw uh, we can say canvas of context of draw image content dot get Let's say we want to draw the back image uh, at zero, zero. So let's just implement this tick function and run function and other stuff like that. So you can start with the tick function. That just look like this for now. Where we console of where we want that it should be over it overrided. Uh, child class like that. And then the run method. Uh, you probably guess what how what it will look like now for uh, what it will look like uh, now anyway so here we just create this loop function Let's say function uh, loop then we'll say this dot rec frame equals to uh, let's remove one underscore equals to the window dot uh, window dot request animation frame a loop like that Whoa. and let's uh, paste this here as well oh come on yeah now it should be copied yeah cool and of course change this to self or self because of this yeah so that should be the loop function working at least so let's see here whoops well let's see if the tick function is called even so let's just log out the message console.log test yeah the test message written out then why isn't this working oh maybe it is maybe it's too small to see here yeah, that's probably it. So let's just let's just increase the size of the canvas here. So it seems to be form AD by 272 pixels. So let's set that. So that's done at least. So the size is the right size here. Now let's see. No, still lost the draw. So one second guys, let me just debug this and I'll be right back. Oh, I'm really so stupid sometimes. Of course we need to flip the canvas in order for it to show. So just go down here to the loop function. And here basically what we want to do is we want to call the canvas to flip. So we won't forget that into the in the future. Yeah, so we now we can see that uh, the 
the graphics of the game is actually drawn to the canvas here. And as you can see here, we can increase the scale factor and all the stuff like that, and that will uh, fit the game to the, uh, or that will scale the uh, graphics of the game for us. So that's really cool, but let's keep it for one for now. Uh, and we can make it dynamically scale later. Yeah, so what can we do from here? Well, um, let's actually uh, uh, implement a run and a stop function for the game here. So we can uh, call it like this. And here, in the run function, we can say if this start running, then we want to return, of course. Else, we want to set this to running. It goes to true, like that. In order for it to work here. Now you can say if this, if we have requested uh, a request, request animation frame, then we just want to call the window but cancel uh, uh, animation frame. I think that's the right method. I just need to Google that real quick. Cancel animation frame. Yeah, that seemed to be the case. Yes. Uh, and this won't work in all browsers. We'll uh, we'll uh, create some polar fields up here soon. Don't worry. Then we want to set the uh, rec frame to null. In any case, and then we want to set the running variable to false here. So that's cool. And then just in the main here, we will uh, create bind the window dot on blur event or blur event to game dot uh, stop dot bind game so this will call with the game context now we say window dot on focus to the game dot run dot bind game so for this work now so let's see let's just log out the test message console log test again and that should be written over on the console and then if we click down here whoops Maybe it isn't, yeah, now we can see here, when I click on the console, that the game is actually stopping. All the test message isn't written out over and over again in the console. So that means that this works at least. So that's good. Let's just wait for it to sort of kick in here. Yeah, that's in the case here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we now have that done. Uh, let's actually, uh, yeah, let's leave the game for this for now. Let's just add some uh, polyfills here for the uh, window request animation frame. So one I really like is just to declare the vendors up here. So say var vendors, say var vendors equals to Opera, MS, MOS, and WebKit again, of course. Then we use loop to all the vendors. So say var i equals vendors at length. And then we say i minus minus and not window dot request animation frame like that and then we say window dot request animation frame equals window dot uh, sorry uh, square brackets uh, vendors I can actually say well, b equals then come on vendors at i like that b plus request animation frame change these to a cap capitalized R of course and then set window dot cancel and request the image frame cancel image frame sorry window B plus cancel and image frame or window B plus cancel it. request an image frame because there are two different versions of the cancel and image frame so we should now have a working polyfill for uh, window request and image frame. So that's really cool. That's nice and all. Um, so let's actually close down the game for now. So basically, what we want to create here, we just want to, we just want to say this dot has load. Set that equal to false. Then inside of here we say if this dot has load, then we want stuff to be called here. Else, 
we want to say the dist of has load equals to the content dot load uh, no sorry progress equals to one just to make it a bit more efficient there so we don't need to do this check every frame uh, and here uh, we can say if this has load so if it is the first time we this block of code is called then we also want to set this dot tetris equals to a new tetris game like that and the tetris uh, game we can create there in the source folder as well so we say new file tetris.js just define this uh, module function like that var tetris equals class dot extend course return tetris like that then just uh, include it here as well so you can say source tetris and don't forget the tetris here as well so let's reload it see if it works yeah no error messages so then we'll say if this dot has load, then we'll set this dot tetris dot handle inputs. And again, put input there. there. Okay, this dot tetris dot update. Like that and this dot tetris dot draw canvas context. Like that. So let's just create those methods. We we'll say handle inputs function. That and then we have update, I think we call it function, and then lastly, uh, draw function context like that. And here we can say this dot back equals content dot get back like that. Here we can say context dot draw image this back zero zero and I saw that I misspelled here so let's see yeah now we're back where we had before here but we have abstracted out some parts of the game here anyway so let's actually do one more thing in this video as well so let's just add all of the scores here. The page and then let's call it the day and let's create the, all of the logic in a model video so for that we'll create a new uh, uh, module as well that we will call numfont.js and I we should really have a snippet for this but anyway uh, let's just clear this function on numfont equals class dot extend return None font like that. Then the Tetris, it will require this module, so say source non font like that of course. Set that equal to font non font and I can say this dot font equals an object and let's just see which numbers we have here. So let's start by adding the gray font. So you're gonna say gray equal to a new num font and what will this take for augments well you can say that uh, can say that it will take uh, an image object and then a uh, white position since it will just be uh, yeah for this file here so take a white pop uh, uh, y, what do you say, a y position on uh, on which uh, on which row it's going to take care of course. Then uh, the height of each of the numbers. So let's just open this up with a uh, uh, simple image editor here, so we can see. 
see how wide these, uh, these uh, letters are. So they seem to be yeah, 9 pixels I think. Just check one more time. Well the whole thing is 72, so we can divide 72 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Yeah, they are 9 tall, so let's just add that to the, as the second uh, parameter there. So let's just create a constructor to take in all these, the init function. And I don't know why I have this in the in the input this should of course be in the init method. <laughs> I, I thought something looked strange and uh, yeah, there it was. Should still work though. Yeah. Anyway, so num font it take a uh, image, then a uh, y position, and a uh, height. So that's cool. So you can say this dot image equals image, this dot y equals y, this dot height equals h, and then this dot width equals image dot width divided by ten. Because there are ten uh, ten numbers zero to nine. Anyway, and here we can say give it a one method that we call draw. So we just say which number it should draw. So say, uh, yeah, which number it should draw, of course. But maybe take a context first. <laughs> so which context it want to draw, the number two, then an X and a Y position, and a padding, an optional padding. Okay, so we just set the number equals to this stuff, and now you can say if the padding is existence, <laughs> if, if the padding exists, um, yeah, I'll leave that for now. I just uh, need to just check some stuff before I do that though. Now we can say context.draw, uh, we can say for, hmm, one moment, guys. I just uh, think I will do this and I'll be right back. Yeah, so I'm back. So I'm based, I found out the method how to do this. Anyway, so we have looped through all of the numbers in the. Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, all of the letters in the number. So you say number length like that, i, plus, I is less than len, i plus plus, the regular stuff here. And then we say it. Let's say n up here, that's a bit more efficient. Alright, so say var n equals uh, num at i. Like that, and then we of course want to pass an integer of that number. And then we basically just draw an image, we say context of draw image, this dot image. Uh, to the the width times n and the wipes this of y of course uh, for the y position and then the width and this the height then the x and y position where we want to draw it and then the width and the height uh, again and that should be it and then we just Increment x position with the width of each of the letters. And for the padding, it's a bit complicated. I just googled it and I found uh, what I was looking for. So basically, what I want to do is want to say the length is greater or equals to the padding. Uh, then we just want to keep it as, as it is. So we just say uh, we just put it equal to the num, of course. Else, we want to create a new array with the padding uh, minus the length of the number plus one, and we just want to join that by uh, zeros. And then we want to add concatenate that with the number array. So that should be working. Yet. So let's see if it works. So we can go to the Tetris again, and in the draw method, 
let's just say uh, this dot font dot gray dot draw. I want to draw it for context, and let's say you want to draw the number 42. Then at which pos position? So let's say 10, 10, and let's say that we want to pad it with eight zeros. So let's see if it works here. Yeah, so here you can see the number 0, 0, 0, 0, 42 uh, working fine here. And if you say 5, it should pad it with less zeros, and so on and so forth. Anyway, let's implement all of the different colors of the fonts we had. And I said there were 9 of them, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And let's just add those as well here. And let's say which... Uh, numbers do we have? So we have like cyan, red, blue, uh, cyan, red, blue, <laughs> yes, let's see, cyan, red, blue, uh, what you more have, uh, orange, green, yellow, orange, green, Yellow, uh, purple. Yeah, maybe I miscalculated. Let's just keep it uh, like this for now. Let's just uh, make them work like that. Then we just add uh, nine here to the previous one, all the way down. So say eighteen. Uh, 27 of course, 35, 44 I guess, 30, uh, 53, uh, 62 and 71. That doesn't really look good at all. Uh, 71? <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, 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 of course they're all 9 pixels tall, but the one we want to change is of course here. Here we want to say 9, 18, 27, uh, 36, 45, 54, uh, 63. Yeah, this looks a lot better. Alright, so let's see if it works. So we can try to draw the sign color as instead. Yeah, that's it working. Red. Yeah, blue, yeah, orange, yeah, the green one, yes, and the yellow, yes, and lastly the purple. Purple, I said. Yeah, that's gonna be fine. So now everything we need to do is uh, just to figure out the position and where to draw them. And uh, what to draw at that particular point. So I just create this uh, data object that will create like this. And if you don't know that much about Petris, then each page uh, piece has its own name. So uh, this, for example, is called the uh, L piece, I guess, because that looks like an L. This is I, T, this is S, Z, uh, O, and J. So let's just create all those. So say L, I, uh, T. I guess then uh, S Z uh, O and lastly uh, J and all of those we basically want to set to zero. Yeah, and let's create this total as well here. If you look in the on the image just here, you see that. Uh, last we have how many pieces in total we have. Alright, so let's see. They seem like they padded with five numbers. So five is good here. Eh? Uh, and the last one seems to be padded by six. And that one was drawn gray. So let's just say that. So we have that done at least. Six, yes. And what number we want to draw that was the this.data.total. That then with at which position? Let's see. So let's just open up this stuff again. But this time we can open up the 
days, I guess. Yeah. So down here I can see which position I want to draw in, so this is somewhere close to 420 by 220. So let's see what that looks like. 420 by 220. Let's um, reload here. Yeah, almost good. Uh, maybe we should down one and uh, write a bit more. So let's see. 21. Yeah, even more. Fire maybe. Yeah, that seems to be the case. And yeah, so I will just do the rest then. And then we'll call it the day. And I'll just uh, the, do the same way, way here. Like I look here on which position I want to draw them. And uh, yeah, that's about it. And I don't think that will be that fun to watch. Um, so yeah, see you guys when I've done that. Yeah, so I'm back guys. So this is the position I uh, figured out. So you can just uh, copy these numbers if you're following with the video here. Yeah. So let's see what they look like in the page. Uh, and basically, when I let's say I change from this to one here, you can see how the correct post on the thing are updating. Yeah, so mm, thank you guys for watching, and I see you in the next video. Bye.